So in today's edition of the Prelical video podcast, what we're going to talk about is when you have a failure, what kind of data do you need to be able to solve that problem? You know, we do a lot of uh, work around RCA, root cause analysis, and, you know, one of the things I've seen for my entire career, over 30, almost 35 years now, um, people don't collect good data to solve the problem. I mean, how often have you said, hey, we got this big failure, everybody sits down, they're going to do an RCA, and we got no data. We got no broken parts, we've got no historical data, we've got no pie trends. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is, um, it actually comes from our book on root cause analysis, chapter seven. We're going to talk about what do you need to do as far as data collection when you have a failure. So, you know, we used an acronym in the book called the five P's. Okay. Uh, that stands for paper, position, people, uh, parts, and paradigms. Okay. Um, so let's talk about each one of those real quick. So parts, that one's pretty easy, right? Parts, you know, when you have a failure, you know, you want to be able to get that broken shaft or those broken bearings because you want to be able to look at the, at the, the shaft material or the bearings and be able to determine, hey, was that a, was that a fatigue failure? Was it an overload? You know, was it caused by erosion? And we can tell all that from just looking at the parts, okay? So that's an easy one. As soon as you have a failure, you want to make sure you educate, you know, everybody from engineers to the millwrights and other people working on it say, hey, when we have a failure of, you know, any kind of magnitude, uh, I want you to save those parts, put them in a, you know, a container or a bucket or something before we, they end up in the trash or the dumpster. And now all of a sudden we don't have any of the data. Okay. So that's number one is parts. Um, position. What do we mean by positional information? Um, you know, a lot of times we can get that from trends, you know, his, from maybe from your historian. Uh, that could be, you know, temperatures, pressures, all that kind of stuff. Um, in general, we can get that pretty good because the historian keeps, you know, just years and years of that kind of information. So uh, generally it's not too fragile because we can get it. Uh, but it's important to be able to have that available to you for your RCA. Uh, but positional could be other things too. It could be things like, uh, do we seem to see this problem um, in the evening? Or does it seem to have more effect in the summer versus the winter? Maybe it's temperature related. Uh, so we want to see, you know, positions in time. Uh, maybe it's, hey, when this particular shift is on, we seem to have more problems than when this other shift's on. Um, you know, it could be a lot of things. And that's what we want to do is, you know, think of um, when we talk about position, think of that as, you know, correlations. We want to compare things and understand, you know, patterns and what might be happening with the failures. That's especially true for chronic failures. Um, the next one, you know, so we got parts, we've got position, uh, paper. Now, paper and position, they kind of you know, every, everything seems to be digital nowadays. You know, we came up with this acronym years ago when we didn't have so much digital information. Uh, but don't get caught up in that. You know, position and paper, you know, think of paper as things like, you know, work order history or procedures, training documents. I know they're all digital nowadays, but, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Stuff that you would hit print and, you know, you get these documents that explain things, okay? Um the most common ones, you know, as I just mentioned, you know, work order history is a really important one. Uh, generally, you can get that from your uh, maintenance management system, or you might have a, an asset performance management system. Uh, so get all that kind of information and have that ready. And then finally, so we got parts. We talked about position. We talked about um, paper. So now let's talk about people. People you know, obviously is probably one of the more fragile pieces of information because people forget things, right? So you have a failure and you want to talk to that operator who was on, you know, was on duty that evening. Um, but it could be if you don't get to them, you know, soon after the event has occurred, you know, now they're on break, right? They're off for four days or, you know, nowadays if they're working 12s, they might be off for seven days. Okay. And then when they come back, they've, they've kind of forgotten, right? They don't remember all the specific details. So you really want to, if you want, you know, face-to-face -face information, something where somebody observed it, 
you want to get that just as quickly as you possibly can. Okay. Now other information, you know, you might want to talk to, Hey, I want to talk to a vendor or I want to talk to, you know, somebody in the storeroom or something like that. Yeah. That probably you could do a few days later or whatever, but if you want the, you know, the identifiable information, the people who were there at the time, the people who saw the failure, maybe the, the maintenance crew that worked on it, uh, you want to get to them just as quickly as you can and understand what did you see? What did you hear? Uh, did you see anything abnormal when you were working on it? Um, especially as an operator, say, hey, did you hear anything before? Did you have any indication that there was something going on? Uh, so that can be really important. And then finally, we have paradigms. And paradigms is a close cousin to um, what I would call um, people information. You know, paradigms is, is simply mindsets that people have. You know, and if everybody kind of shares a common mindset, we call that a paradigm. You might want to think of it as a theme too. As you're you're talking to people and you're trying to understand what happened, you'll pick up on some themes, right? I mean, some common things that you might hear is, well, you know, they talk about safety all the time here, but you know, when it comes down to it, they really do want us to to do things to get it done quickly. Uh, they don't really seem to care about safety. Now that may or may not be true, uh, but if people feel that way, then you know, it becomes a paradigm, right? And people sort of act on their paradigms. Behaviors are based on paradigms, okay? So when you're interviewing people, kind of look for themes. Are people, do you seem to hear the same types of things? Hey, we never have any money to fix this. Or, you know, I've been telling them for years to fix this and they never will. Um, you know, nobody listens. You know, that kind of stuff can help you understand what's going on. Um, you know, maybe with that failure you know, or at least the way people's behaviors have changed based on their perceptions. Okay, so that's a little bit about data collection. So the next time you have a failure, you know, think about the five Ps. That's a nice, easy way to think of it. You know, there's parts information, which is pretty fragile. Uh, people, position, um, paradigms, paper. You know, think about those five, those five words and think those are the buckets of information that you'll want to collect before you ever sit down with your team you know, you want to, you know, make sure you've got some of this data collected because you can't solve a problem if you don't have data. So if you want to learn more about that, you know, we would love for you to, you know, pick up a copy of our um, root cause analysis book. You can find it, you know, anywhere um, that sells either industrial books. You can pick it up on places like Amazon and so forth. Um, that'd be chapter seven in this book kind of explains, gives you a lot of details around data collection, gives a lot of examples. Um, so hopefully you, you know, got a little bit out of this. Um, if you want to solve problems, you got to collect data. We're going to end with that. Um, if you enjoyed this topic, you know, give us a thumbs up or, you know, please share with your, um, your colleagues. And, um, uh, next edition, we'll probably talk more about, you know, other techniques around, you know, solving problems and, you know, around making sure that we can get to the root of, of issues that are happening in our plant. Okay. So thanks for listening. Uh, check us out at prelical.com. Again, that's a funny name, but that's the, what we named the company. Uh, stands for practical and reliability. It's the intersection of those two. So check us out, P-R-E-L-I-C-A-L.com. Thanks again.